Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another lesson on Brie Algebra. And this one is Unit 3, Lesson 4, Solving Equations by Square Roots. Okay, so the new inverse operation says when a variable is squared, like x squared, you can square root both sides to solve for the variable. So squared is an operation in math, and the inverse of squaring is square rooting. S-Q-U-A-R-E-R-O-O-T. Okay, watch out. These equations can have more than one solution. What? They can have more than one solution, and I'll get to that when we get to those. So here we go. Let's take a look at the steps. And the steps to solve one, Locate the variable. Sound familiar? Two, isolate the x squared by using inverse operations to remove constants and coefficients. Hopefully you know your vocabulary. And step three, take the square root of both sides and then check your solution. So here we go. Step one, let me get my highlighter. Locate the variable. And the variable is right there, x squared. Step two, Isolate the x squared by using inverse operations to remove constants and coefficients. Well, here we x squared is all by itself, so there is no step two here. Step three, take the square root of both sides. So now I'm going to do step three. So I'm going to write the square root of x squared equals the square root of 36. Okay. So just like four plus three equals seven, and then I take seven minus three, and I get back to my four because I added then subtracted the three. I did the inverse operation of addition. It works with multiplication, it works with division. Now we're working on square roots. Well, what does square root mean? So let's talk about square roots first. Let's say you had a square and you were told the area was 36, okay? Like here, the square root of 36. That says you have a square that's got an area of 36. And what it's asking for is the square root symbol means what is the length of a side of a square that has an area of 36, okay? So remember that, I don't know if you've already seen this, but area of a square is length times width. But in squares, lengths equal width. So we just call them S's. The length of each side is equal. So we can say S times S instead of L times W. And therefore, we get S squared. So the area equals S squared. So now I can say, well, the area is 36. 36 equals S squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, I get S because S times S is S squared. And six times six is 36. But we have to be careful. You can get a negative because a negative six times a negative six equals a positive 36. And six times six equals a positive 36. And that's why they mean you can get two solutions. OK, as it said right up here in yellow, these equations can have more than one solution. OK, now the area of a square um, cannot be negative. The length of the side can't be negative because I can't have a negative length. So in this case, in this scenario, the answer would just be positive 6. OK, I don't want to confuse you, but. Sometimes the negative works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so anyway, taking the square root of a square cancels it. So that's what I showed right here. The square root of S squared is just simply S. The uh, square root and the two cancel. So when we cancel the square root and the two, we're going to be left with just X. And as I said before, you can get a positive or a negative. So you put plus and then underneath it, you put a minus sign. That means plus or minus. OK, this would be the same as saying negative six comma six. If you put it in a set, a solution set. OK, but we're going to start using this plus minus here, which means positive or negative six. OK, trying to prepare you for higher math classes. 
All right, so next one, let me get my highlighter. Step one, locate the variable. It's right here. Step two, isolate the variable. Well, guess what? It's already isolated. I cannot add or subtract anything to y squared when there's nothing there. So I st skip step two, go to step three, and take the square root of both sides. Oops, pen this. So I'm going to take the square root of 289 equals y squared square root. This cancels, and I get just y. And oh, by the way, I'm going to give you the names of all these things. This is called a radical. And please write this. You need to know these terms. And the sooner you learn them, the better. Um, now, usually we don't write a two here because it's um, implied. But if this was a cube root, which we haven't gotten to yet, like three, for instance, you'd put it there. And that is called an index. Okay, that is the index of the radical. And then the thing underneath, the number inside is called the radicand. Okay, so there's a lot of terminology here. We have an index, we have the radical symbol, we have a radicand. Okay. So I'm going to be using these terms. So the y squared was the radicand, but taking the square root, you just are left with y. And the square root of 289 is 17, and it can be positive or negative. OK, next one. I uh, locate the variable, m squared. There is no addition or subtraction. It's all by itself. There is no isolating. There's no step two. So I skip step two and go on to step three. Take the square root of both sides. Okay. And again, our radicand is m squared. Taking the square root of m squared cancels the two and the square root. And we get m equals. And 11 times 11 is 121. But it can be positive or negative for this reason over here. OK, hopefully this is pretty simple to you. Highlight and locate the variable. Here's the variable. Again, there is no addition or subtraction. Step two skipped. We don't need to isolate it. It already is isolated. We go on to step three and take the square root of both sides. And by the way, step four is on your own. So what I would do here, I will do the checking on this one. I haven't been checking my solutions. I need you to do that. That's step four. So anyhow, step three, take the square root of both sides. Well, 400 is four times 100. And I know the square root of four is two. And I know the square root of 100 is 10. And then I can multiply them and get 20. So 20 times 20 is 400 and can be positive or negative and the square root of k squared is k. So now I'm going to check this one. So you do 400 equals negative 20 squared. 400 equals, well, negative times a negative is positive, and 20 times 20 is 400, so it checks. 400 equals 20 squared. 400 equals 20 times 20 is 400. Positive times a positive is positive, And that also checks. So that's how you check these. I haven't been doing it. And I'm not going to do it. That's up to you. So I don't want to do that over and over in the video. OK, so highlight step one, isolate the or locate the variable. Here it is. OK, there is no addition or subtraction. It is already isolated. There, We skip step two on this. Go on to step three. Take the square root of both sides. OK, the square root of a squared is a. And the square root of 0 is 0. Now, in this case, we don't have a plus or minus. There's no such thing as negative 0. So we just simply say a equals 0. OK? Um, next one, r, said the pirate. Um, r squared. It's already isolated. There is no step 2 in this case. When is that going to begin? All right, anyway, step three, take the square root of both sides. Square root of r squared is r. 196. Uh, 15 and 15 is 225. 14 and 14 is 196. So I'm going to take 14, and it's the positive or the negative. Okay? 
Finally, we're on to a problem that's going to require us to do step two. So I take my highlighter, I locate the variable, I then identify an operation that's being um, attached to that variable, and I need to do the inverse operation of that first. So let's go back up. This is the first time we've had to do this. Isolate x squared by using inverse operations to remove constants and coefficients. So this is a constant, a number all by itself. And to get rid of that constant, we do the inverse operation, which is plus 10. Very simple. We've done this in the prior lessons. And that's going to give us x squared equals 39 minus 10 is 29. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, not minus 10, plus 10. I was going to say, wow, they're really jumping into irrationals real quick. All right, 49. X squared equals 49. That's step two. Now, step three, we take the square root of both sides. The square root of X squared is simply X, and the square root of 49 is 7. But remember, it can be positive or negative. And then check your solution. Okay, next one. Highlight, find the variable, it's right here. Is there an operation attached? Yes, it's an addition to do the inverse operation to get rid of that constant. Subtract 24, subtract 24. Our goal in this step is to get the variable that's squared all by itself. And when we did that, we get it. 33 minus 24 is nine. Take the square root, oops, let me change colors. Okay, step three is in purple. Take the square root of m squared. Take the square root of nine. The square root of m squared is m. The square root of nine is plus or minus three. And check your solutions. Okay. Okay, so number nine, same process here. Get the highlighter. Where is the variable that's being squared? It's right there, w squared. Step two. We want to isolate the variable by doing inverse operations. And in this situation, it's 3 times w squared. So I want to divide both sides by 3. This will cancel these 3s, leaving w squared. There, the w squared is isolated. 3 goes into 19, 6 times. 3 goes into 12, 4 times. That's 64. Step 3 is take the square root of both sides. So that's going to leave me with w equals. And the square root of 64 is 8 and it can be positive or negative. Substitute your answers into the equation and check. All right, next one. Where's the variable that's squared? Right there. Step two, there is division right here. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative five. So I'm gonna show my work, negative five in parentheses times k squared over negative five equals negative 20 times negative 5. Think of this as over 1. The negative 5s cancel. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. 1 times k squared is k squared. Negative times a negative is positive. 20 times 5 is 100. Okay, next step, take the square root of both sides, and I get k equals the square root of 100, which is 10, and it can be positive or negative. And we're done after you check it. Next one, where is the variable? It's right here. Step two, what operations attached? Step three, get rid of that. Or actually, it is still step two. We're going to actually going to do the inverse, which is that step. And we're going to subtract 52 from both sides. Okay, for three, 11 minus two is nine. 3 to 2, 13, 8 and 5 is 13, and I get 89, and there's a 2. Equals, this cancels, I get P squared. So then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I kind of got lazy here and uh, took the square root on the prior step. It's probably better if I do it this way and show all my steps. The square root of P squared is P, and the square root of 289 is 17, and it can be positive or negative. Check your solution. All right, where's M squared? Right there. There's the variable that's squared. What operation is happening here? Division. What's the inverse of division? Multiplication. So I'm going to take 2 times 
m squared divided by 2 and take 72 times 2. These two cancel. I get m squared equals 4,144. Okay. I take the square root of both sides. And the square root of m squared is m. The square root of 144 is 12. It can be positive or negative. All right, number 13. Here's the variable. It's being multiplied by negative 1. OK, so I don't want a negative, so I'm going to divide by negative 1. I'm going to do it in blue. Divide both sides by negative 1. The negative 1 over negative 1 becomes positive 1. Negative divided by negative is positive, And I get p squared equals negative divided by negative is positive 324. Take the square root of both sides. And I get p equals and 324. So sometimes these bigger numbers, I don't know the um, perfect squares, and maybe you don't know what uh, 144 square root is off the top of your head. You can always do a factor tree. This is even. I can divide it by 2. 2 goes into 3 once with a remainder of 1. 2 goes into 12, 6. And then half of 4 is 2. And this would become 2 times 81. And this is 3 times 27. And this is 3 times 9. And this is 3 times 3. So here's a pair of 2s. Here's a pair of 3s. And here's a pair of 3s. So you say 2 times 3 times 3, which is 18. So this is 18. And you can check it in your calculator. 18 squared is 324. The answer can be positive or negative. OK? So that's how you simplify a radical using a factor tree. Get my highlighter. Where's the variable that's being squared? Right there. What operation is in between? It's multiplication. What's the inverse of multiplication? Division. Divide both sides by 4. These cancel. I get x squared equals 9 over 4. Don't worry, fractions aren't that bad. <clears throat> Next step, we take the square root of both sides. Well, let me talk about a fraction under a radical. If I have a radical 9 over 4 in a, or a square root, or a fraction 9 fourths in a square root, in other words, the radicand is a fraction, I can split this up and give the numerator its own radical and give the denominator its own radical. And then take the square root of 9 and take the square root of 4 and get 3 halves. So the square root of x squared is x, and I get 3 over 2, and it can be positive or negative. OK, that's the first one we've had of a fraction. Next one, where's the variable? Right there. Step 2, what operations between them? Multiplication. Use the wrong thickness right there. It's multiplication. What's the inverse of multiplication? It is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 81. 81 divided by 81 is 1, leaving me with 1n squared, which is simply n squared. And 16 over 81 is 8. No, I can't take it. Let me um, do factors of 16 and factors of 81. 16 is 2 times 8. 2 or 8 will not go into 16. So actually, I cannot reduce this. So I'm just going to take the square root. Oops, forgot to switch back to my pen. I'm going to just write 16 over 81. Get rid of this. Okay, and take the square root of both sides. And this time I'm going to split it up immediately because now I know how to do that. And the square root of n squared is n, and the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 81 is 9. And you can take the positive or negative. Okay. Where's the variable? 
What operations in between? Multiplication. What's the inverse of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 25. Negative 25 divided by negative 25 is positive 1, and I just get q squared. Negative divided by negative is positive, so now I'm just going to write 49 over 25, but I'm not going to reduce it. And then step three is take the square root of both sides, or is that step four? Take the square root of q squared and take the square root of 49 over the square root of 25. That is going to give me q equals 7 over 5. It can be positive or negative. Check your solutions. Next one. Where's the variable? Right here. What operations? Being multiplied by negative 1 and being subtract and 37 subtracted from it. So I have two inverse operations here. Do the addition subtraction first. Remember GEMDAS. We're moving across an equal sign. So we do this sem uh, we're actually going to do this in reverse order of operations. We're going to do sad meg. And we do subtraction addition first. And then we do multiplication division. So the inverse of subtraction is addition. So that's the first step. And I'm going to get negative 4a squared. This is gone. Equals negative 137 plus 37 is negative 100. Now I'm going to focus on the multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division, so I divide by negative 4. Negative divided by negative is positive. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times a squared is simply a squared. Negative divided by negative is positive. 100 divided by 4 is 25. Step 3, you take the square root of both sides, and you get a equals the square root of 25, positive or negative 5. Check your answer. Where's my variable? Right there. What operation? Division and addition. Do the isolation of the variables. Get rid of the constant first by subtracting. And I get w squared divided by 3 equals 48 minus 21 is 27. And now I have division. The inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. These cancel, leaving me with w squared. Seven times 27 times 3 is 81. And then I take the square root of both sides. w equals the square root of 81 plus or minus 9. Okay. Where's the variable? What operations attached? Subtraction. What's the inverse of subtraction? Addition. But this is subtracting 18. So I want to subtract I want to subtract 18 from positive 18 if you will subtract 18 18 minus 18 is 0 left with negative x squared be careful that negative sign does not just disappear and 18 151 how many times does that go let's see 18 won't go into 15 So 5 times 26, let's try 7. Okay, hang on. All right, I was divided. It's not division. It's negative 151 plus a negative 18. That's 9. That's 6. That's 1. And it's negative. So negative x squared equals negative 169. Now this is times negative one, so I want to divide by a negative one on both sides. I can't have a negative exponent. This will give me a negative divided by a negative is positive x squared equals a negative divided by a positive is positive, and I get 169. Divide both, or take the square root of both sides once the variable is isolated, and you get x equals, and the square root of 169 is 13, and it can be positive or negative. Check your solutions. Okay, the next one, the variable is right here. There are two operations going on, subtraction and multiplication. We take care of the subtraction first by adding 54. Add 54 to both sides. I get 4v squared equals 49. Okay. 
I'm then going to divide both sides by, this is multiplication, by the way. So the inverse of multiplication is division. So you divide both sides by four and I get V squared equals 49 divided by four. Take the square root of both sides and I get V equals the square root of 49 over the square root of four, which equals seven over two and it can be plus or minus. Plug it back in, check your solutions, and you are done. Okay, that brings us to the unit three equations and inequalities assignment, homework four, solving equations by square roots. So there's your introduction to square roots. Hopefully you understand how to take square roots. Thanks for watching and have a great day.